Hello everyone, and welcome back to this next video in the eHoudini Academy Foundation module. In this video, we are going to start working on our Unreal Texture node, the utility Unreal Simple Texture asset. So let's go over to Houdini, and let's have a quick look at this. So here we have the Simple Unreal Texture asset, and this comes with the ability to specify um, a texture over here, both for the Houdini preview and the Unreal Material assignment. Then next to that, we have some drop downs. So I can quickly select a different material and assign that. And these materials are pre configured within the parameter, but we can also add new ones to them if we want to. Um, so if you have your own textures, you can add them in here as well. And as long as these two are the same, then you will have both the same material in Unreal and in Houdini. Next, we can also assign to a particular group selection our material, so we can specify it on a very specific part of our geometry, so not everything. And then down here, if you enable this, you can also configure the shape and scale of your material as well. So we can change the pivot, which applies to the rotation and the scale. We can scale it in both the U and V direction, and we can offset our material as well. So let's move over to our main Houdini scene and let's get started on creating a new utility asset. Now in this case, this is going to be a surface operator type asset and I'm just going to drop it down somewhere over here. doesn't really matter. Um, let's create a subnet and I'm going to name this one student utility simple unreal texture okay then let's right click this node go to create digital asset that will bring up the uh, digital asset dialog again let's copy the label paste it into the name and then over here i want to set my file path to the correct folder i don't want this to be in my documents folder so let's browse for our main project folder right here under job go to hda and then in here um, let's create our new simple unreal texture hda right there then let's accept that all right so here is our um, type properties window for this node let's uh, first configure its main basic settings now I'm going to leave the minimum and maximum values for the outputs and the inputs the same because um, we only need one input and one output for this asset. And next to that, um, let's look over here. Let's give it a new icon, right? So in this case, I'm going to use the SOP underscore texture icon. That one comes from the um, UV texture node. And then let's add a color to this node when we create it. So under scripts, I'm going to add a new on created event. And if you want to have this code again, then just go to one of the um, delete by distance nodes, open those up, copy our Python script, paste it in here. And then the color that I want to set in this case is going to be 0 0.145, 0 0.667, and 0 0.557. And if I apply that, and I drop down a new simple Unreal Texture node right here, let me just space this all out. we're going to get this nice green color on our node, plus the icon, right? So at this point, we are ready to start working on the internals of this node. I'm just going to grab a grid so we can have something to make it work on. And let's hide all of our other geometry as well. And then inside this node, um, let's dive in. And I'm first going to create a null node below my input. 
So let's create one of those. Plug that in, and I'm gonna call it input. Okay, so everything else is gonna be below that. Then, next, uh, what I would like to do is set up some basic UV and texture controls. So we can at least set some UVs on this object that we can potentially use, but I want to be able to turn it on or off. So let's create a UV texture node. Plug that in. And I'm gonna add a UV transform node behind it. Because by default, and let me just bring this up. Like so. This is going to, again, project within the bounding space of this object. If I grab a UV transform node, however, I can then manipulate inside of the UV transform node, the positioning of my UVs, as well as the scale and the pivot, which we cannot do over here. We cannot control where the pivot is. So I want the UV transform node for my main transformations of the UVs. The UV texture is simply gonna determine what axes we are gonna project in. And then let's grab a switch, plug that in over here. So I can turn this on or off if I want to. And I'm gonna say, apply new UVs. I want to promote these to the top level. So I have control over this. And I also would like to be able to see my UVs. So let's create down below a quick shade node. Plug that one in. So now I have the ability to view the UVs in my viewport. And uh, let's start hooking this stuff up. So just to make sure I can select my asset. Let's grab it from here. And under parameters, um, what I would like to do is grab first from a UV texture node up here, the um, group field. So this will allow us to specify what we want to apply our texture on, right? Let's grab it from over here and drag it in. Now I'm gonna leave this by default. So we have a default group system already ready made. It will come with its uh, own menu for whatever groups are present on our geometry. So whatever comes in here. And it will also have our action button on the right for the uh, group selection option. So that can be pretty useful. Then let's grab a separator, drag it in. And I would like to create next a toggle right there. And I'm gonna name this toggle apply new UVs and as for its label I'm gonna say project new simple UVs by default I'm gonna leave this option off because I don't always want to project new UVs with this node but I want to have the option then I'm gonna grab a folder and I'm gonna set this one to simple. Um, and what simple folders will do is they will create a simple outline that looks somewhat like this. Okay, so we have a way to organize our parameters and hide them together with their little folder wrapper. So um, let's create that. I'm gonna name this folder the new UV projection. like so. I don't really care about the folder name. That's not gonna be very relevant here. And then let's drag in some of these parameters. The first one that I want is the projection axes from the UV texture node. So let's grab that one and plug it in. There. And the next what I would like to do is I actually want to have the scale, offset, and angle. But I don't want to wire them into my UV texture node. I actually want to wire them into my UV transform node. Now, the thing is, the UV texture node actually has specific types of parameters here. If I drag them in, you'll see what I mean. 
if I grab my scale, for example, it actually creates a dedicated UVW type parameter. And we can easily configure this one to UV because I don't need the W coordinate in this case. Um, and this one is kind of like a float, but it has its own attribute naming convention. It has its own um, basically U and V attributes as opposed to X, Y, Z. We don't have to use this, but in this case, I'm going to. So let's plug this one into our folder like so. Then let's grab the offset as well. Again, I'm going to change this from UVW to UV. And then let's grab the angle over here. And this one will create a dedicated angle parameter. And you can find these ones here on the left as well. UV, UVW, and at the top we can find angle. Now, like I mentioned, these are basically just floats with a specific naming convention. They're already set up properly, so I don't have to go ahead and mess with them too much. But with these, um, of course, if I apply this, I'm going to apply it to my current UV texture node. Now, because I set them to UV mode, they only have two values. And as such, we only hook up the first two values of these, which is fine. What I would like to do at this point is go ahead and disconnect these parameters from my UV texture node. So I'm simply going to delete these channels. And then let's go to our UV transform node instead. And in here, I'm going to start plugging these up. So um, let's grab our parameter panel. This is the parameter panel for this node. And then let's grab the scale, drag it over and say relative channel reference. And this will hook it up like so. So we don't per se have to use the right click copy. We can also drag it from one to the other. That will work too. Then let's grab offset. I'm going to drag that into translate relative reference that. And then the angle is going to go into rotate Z like so. So now we have this hooked up and we can control these. And finally, I also want to have this for the pivot. So in this case, I'm going to grab it from over here, drag my pivot up above my scale, and I'm going to set it over to a UV type as well. So if I apply that one, then now it will hook it up like so. And as you can see, it says PUPV for the pivot instead of PXYZ. That's because this is a um, UV type parameter. If we apply that, then this should all be set up. I can now control the offset of my UVs. Next to that, we can scale our UVs or independently if we want. And we can change the pivot location. So if I set this to 0.5 each and then rotate the angle, it will rotate around the middle or maybe it will rotate around, say, the left side or the left bottom corner. So we have control over that. So with that, we have this set up, but I would like to make it so that this only works if our um, project new simple UVs is turned on. So let's go to our switch, copy that, paste it in there. And now it will turn on and create our UVs when this is enabled, otherwise it won't. And then finally, let's make sure that this menu here only appears when our toggle is turned on. So over here under our folder, I'm going to say hide this tab when within curly brackets or apply new UVs equals zero. Like so. So that will mean that we only have our UV controls 
when we use this. Now, um, right now we still have this quick shade, which um, will apply UVs when they aren't present. But because this is a temporary node that we are going to remove in the last video of our course, I'm going to turn this one red, call it temp, and then, uh, well, we won't have this feature later when we finish the tool. So this is for that. In case this one isn't present, we do have UVs. Now, finally, what I want to do is create an interface that has a couple of presets ready. So if I look again at the example interface here, I need to set up two more things. One is a folder structure for both the Unreal folder and the texture folder that we need to load our textures from. This could be from my D drive or it can be from my job folder, like um, dollar sign job for the project, required files and then textures, which is the default folder where the textures are located in our project. So uh, in that case, that would be this folder with all our textures. So we can call on those. So what I would like to do is fill out this initial file path and then I want to add to it the name of the texture I want to load right here. Now this material is the same in Unreal and on my hard drive. I just need to format the naming convention differently. So um, if I provide the file path in Unreal, which would be right over here, under my materials folder. But unlike before, where we simply right clicked it and we went copy reference, and this will allow us to um, basically get the file path as well as the actual extension. What I want to do in this case is actually write it out myself procedurally so that we can uh, assemble it from the folder location and then the name of the file because it's, it's predictable. We can actually write this out ourselves. So let's go over and let's um, set this up. So in here, I'm gonna create a new attribute create node. And I'm gonna call this one the Unreal Material. Okay. And I'm gonna color it green like so. Now inside of this node, I need to create a new string attribute, a primitive string attribute. So let's set it up here. And I want to make sure I assign this one to my group. So if I grab my parameter panel, and I grab my group field here, and drag that over, plug it in as a relative reference. So now if I assign a group here, it will appear there as well. Then as for its name, I'm going to name this the Unreal Material. So we've already done this before. This will basically assign this material um, in Unreal, right? It will be this attribute that we need to set. Now to formulate this attribute, we are going to need a couple of pieces of information. Inside of our type properties, let's create a couple of new parameter fields. So let's create a bit of space for that. I'm going to create a separator right here. In fact, I'm going to drop down two of them. So we have three separators. The top section here is going to be our file path locations. So that's going to be this set here where we can set our prefix folder location and the other one will be for unreal so let's set those up first the first one is going to be a file directory so let's grab that drag it in that's going to be called the texture folder and i'm going to call this one prefix texture folder like so now as for the default value i'm going to set this one to the texture folder in our project 
Now, if you've set up the folders in the same way as we did when we started this all out, then you should have a texture folder inside of your project folder. If you go in there, all your textures should be there. So all we need to do is type dollar sign job slash text. And that should do it. Now I'm going to add an extra slash at the end, just in case, right? So we have this format. And then let's add another entry here, this time a string. And this one's going to be for our Unreal Material Path. Uh, just like what we did before for the main tool, right? For the foundation building. Let's set this one up. Let's call this one Unreal Mod Path and Unreal Material Path. Then under Channels, I'm going to set its value here to Materials, like so. And then let's apply that. So now we should have in our parameters, we might pull that one up, a Materials folder and a job texture folder. So this one will be for a texture that we need to load from a certain folder on our hard drive for our preview texture inside of Houdini. And this one is going to be for Unreal. And then next, let's add the um, actual texture names as well. So for that, let's create a new string parameter again. Let's drop it in below our separator there. We're going to name this one preview text and then preview texture name. And under channels, um, we can keep this one blank because we're not going to set this by default. But what I am going to do is go to the menu tab and I'm going to add some presets in here. Now, in this case, this is going to take a little bit of time to set up, but it's not very complicated. I just want to do it once and then we don't have to do it again. Now in here, what I would like to do is create a preset dropdown for my string. Similar to what you would get here, but this one is created through a uh, Python script. In this case, um, I simply want to have a preset dropdown that I've defined in here, okay, in this list. Now if I enable this and I give it some values by default, it's going to create a standard type of uh, ordered menu dropdown. So if I do this and I say zero test one, one test two, and I apply that, then we're gonna get a simple ordered menu, which is very similar to if we had simply grabbed it from here, right? It's technically a string parameter, but it's acting like an ordered menu right now. Now, what we can do is change it around to some of the other settings. For example, there's the mini version here. If we enable that one, then instead of having that value, we can actually set them like so, but we don't actually have the value visible. That's not really useful for us right now. Now I am going to skip the control next parameter one because uh, I have, haven't really found this one useful so far, but the one that we could look at is replace. So if I click on that one and I click on apply, then now instead what we get is the ability to select one of our options and instead of giving us a fixed drop down we simply have a string parameter field here that we can fill out but if we select a preset it will replace it with that one okay so that's useful and if we set it to toggle instead and we apply that then now we can go ahead and add or remove these options independently. So if we already have something in here and we then click on these, we simply add them with a space in between. So um, this can be pretty useful depending on what you need it for. In our case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this one to replace field plus single selection menu. And I'm going to set these values here to reflect these parameters right there. The first one is going to be the full name of our texture. 
So if we look at them over here inside of our texture folder, and I look at them like this, I'm basically going to grab all the textures that have base color in them, right? So in our case, that means that I'm going to start by filling in our token field with tiling concrete wall base color dot png. And I'm just going to stretch this out so we can see the entire field properly. Um, make this a little more comfortable. And this one is going to be concrete wall as a simple label. Like so. And I'm going to set this all up right now um, because later we can simply copy this and then use it in the next utility node as well. So that will make it a bit easier for us. Now, in our case, I have about 11 different presets to set. So I am going to simply copy and paste this over and then you can go ahead and type it in. Uh, otherwise, this is going to take some time. And if you've done all of that, then you're done. Now, if you need to, you can go ahead and pause and copy this over. Um, if you need to make sure you get the names right, go to the folder and just copy the names from here. Okay, because these are eventually the names we're going to be using. The base color ones. Okay, so that's the one for the preview texture. Now let's do the same thing for the Unreal Material name. I'm going to copy this parameter, paste it back in, and I'm going to rename it to Unreal Text, and I'll call this one Unreal Material Name. Under its menu value, I'm going to go ahead and change these out. In this case, we want to change these over so they're renamed to um, the following naming convention. Let's say M underscore tiling underscore the name of the texture and then underscore instance. Because in this case, we have um, Unreal Material instances and regular materials right here. And we'll be able to flip between these if we need to. So I'm going to grab these and I'm going to simply replace the first field. So this is going to be M tiling concrete bars inst, like so. And then we can repeat that for all of these. So I'm just going to go ahead and quickly paste this in from my other file. And in your case, um, you'll have to either copy it from the example file if you want or type it in yourself. So I'm just going to finish it up. So it looks like that. And then lastly, I want to add two more values in here that are unique for the Unreal materials, because I don't have a glass texture inside of Houdini to preview, but I do have glass textures inside of Unreal. So in Unreal, I actually have mdeco glass instance and version two as well. And these ones are two different materials, one for the bottom windows and one for the top windows. And if you want later on in the tool, you can actually go into the um, output, find the model for the building, and then replace each individual glass with say a window texture or something. So that's why I have two separate ones. Let's um, also set these up. So in this case, that's going to be M underscore deco glass underscore instance. And I'm going to call this one deco glass. Um, and if you want, you can say bottom floor. And then the second one is going to be deco glass two. And we'll make this one for the uh, upper floors. So with that, if we apply this, then now we will have a drop down for each of these. So if I remove these ones and I replace it, then now we can set 
say both our red brick material and our red brick unreal material right there. Now last, I want to be able to specify if this is going to be a material instance or not. So let's create a simple um, ordered menu as well. We're going to go over here, drag it in above our Unreal Material name. And then I'm going to rename this one to um, Unreal Type. And then Unreal Material Type. Under its menu, I am going to set it to um, Material Instance Constant. which is the prefix that most materials get if you use a material instance constant. And then over here, I'm going to say material instance under the label. And for regular materials, we're just going to use the prefix material. Like so. Now by default, I am going to use the material instance constants. So under channels, let's plug that in as its default value and let's apply that. So now I have this drop down here. Let's um, join this one horizontally to the next parameter. So they get placed side by side like that. And with this, our interface is done. Okay, so this will allow us to configure everything from simple drop downs and we just need to hook it up now. So over here inside of our attribute create node, um, I'm going to write a expression that's going to add these ones together. Now so far we have used attribute wrangles to add strings together, but we can also do this inside of a parameter field just the same. It just depends on how you want to define it. Now, in our case, I'm going to treat this as an expression, which means that we need to add it inside backticks. Now, um, if we copy one of our parameters here and we paste it in, it will automatically give those to us. So uh, that's fine. If we evaluate that, we now have as our first entry material instance constant. OK, if we flip this over to material, it's going to say material instead. And then next, let's add to it using the plus symbol, still with inside the uh, back ticks, right? Two quotation marks. So we can type a string in here. We can add a string to this. And the plus symbol simply make sure these two get added together. And then inside here, I'm going to type a single quotation mark slash game slash. So if you do that and you evaluate this, then you're going to get this part here. Now, if we look at Unreal and we look at the path that you get from one of these uh, parameters, like let's say we copy one of these, like this uh, instance constant here, we paste that in there, then it's going to say material instance constant, quotation mark, slash game slash, and then whatever folder our materials are located in. So we need to add that next. And then another slash. And then the name of the file. Dot. And then again, the name of the file. And eventually a single quotation mark. So let's replicate that right there. Let's say again, plus. And then I'm going to copy um, over here my Unreal Material Path. Paste that in. And by default, it will have created some backticks, so I want to remove those. So we just have the ones on the outside. Now we have it like that. Now let's add to it again. So let's say again, plus inside of the backtick, quotation marks and then a slash. So that should work. If we evaluate that, we now have a slash right there. Let me stretch this out a bit more. And then in here, I want to add two 
copies of my Unreal Material name. Let's copy that one. Paste it in there. Remove the extra back ticks. Make sure there's a plus in between as well. And then in this case, this is getting too big, so I'm going to open the expression editor. Next, let's copy this part. Add a dot instead of a slash, like so. And then I'm going to copy this part again. Add it behind that. And then I'm going to copy this part again. And I'm going to change the dot into a single quotation mark. So that is the expression that we want to write. I would say it's simple, but it isn't, right? Uh, you just need to format it correctly so that once you get this and you apply it, you get this particular path right there. Okay, so if that's set up, now our Unreal Material will work. Um, now let's repeat this, but instead let's set it up for our preview material as well as an attribute specifically for that. So I'm just gonna go ahead and copy this attribute create node. This one will go a bit quicker, I promise. Um, let's just set this up. So we have preview material here, like so. We're gonna change the uh, name of this attribute to preview material. And then as for this string, uh, I'm actually gonna get rid of that. So let me delete that. And instead, let's paste in our prefix folder, then add a plus, and then let's add in our preview texture name. All within one set of backticks. That is going to set up the full file path that we need to load in our texture. Okay, like so. And then next, let's go ahead and um, copy this over here. Go to our quick shade node. And in there, I want to set up the same settings. So inside of our texture map, I'm going to plug this in. And that will automatically apply the texture. If you've set this up correctly, you should see it too. Assuming you've uh, set a texture. And then under group, I'm going to apply that as well. So let's grab our group field. Plug that in as a relative reference. And that will work. Uh, you don't have to worry about the texture being set because we already, in this case, are applying our UVs right there. Now, like I said, the quickshade node is going to be a temporary node because we cannot compile it. And for that, I actually created this attribute. So if we later on remove the quickshade node, then this attribute is going to carry out of the node to the end of our network where we can set our materials in an environment where uh, it won't interfere with our compiling or optimizations. I'll go more into that then. I just want to add one more entry here, specifically for the name of the texture. So let's click on the plus icon right there. I'm going to grab preview material, plug it in and name it preview material name. Let's make sure this is set to primitive and string as well. And then let's just grab our preview material. And inside backticks, add that one right there. So that's our um, preview texture parameter. So now if you've set this up properly, you should now have four uh, attributes produced by this node, primitive attributes. 
you should have a preview material which is going to be the material that we're going to use for the um, uh, quick shade we have preview material name which is just the name of the material we're loading shop material path which is created by the quick shade and this one actually assigns the uh, material from the shop node in here inside of this node and finally we have our unreal material which will be used to set the material in unreal okay so with that this utility node should be done so let's go outside of it save it and now you can go ahead and test it out so let's change out our texture over here let's say we grab a roof gravel and it looks like in this case my replacement system isn't working properly so let's double check that we need to make sure this is set to replace not total I'm just checking the other one as well okay so now if I grab that we should be getting a different texture depending on what we set and this will be used for uh, quickly setting our textures when we actually build it into our network because we are going to have to put these ones all over the place and being able to set these things quickly and not having to worry about our file paths not having to worry about what textures we actually need is handy so that's why i'm creating these presets if you want to use your own textures you're going to have to type this in by hand and also if you want to use the regular materials then for unreal you'll have to remove underscore instance from this but that's trivial okay in the end this is just a way to quickly get to the file names and not have to worry about it and it also gives you a quick at a glance idea on which texture it's trying to load for houdini and which one it's trying to load for unreal now as for other features that we need to be able to set um, we already know that we can control the scale and the offset and the angle so that should be working fine also the axes we can control and then finally um, up here we have the group so let me make a selection on my mesh like so and that works okay and then i'm going to copy this I'm going to make a separate selection and then maybe apply a different material. So let's say uh, roof gravel could work. Then let's change some of our scales. And well, something's wrong here. It appears it's also scaling the um, other materials that aren't part of our group here. So let's quickly go into the node. and it should be here it seems we're not setting our group which we should be setting everywhere yes just not here under UV transform so let's um, grab it from our parameter interface where we have our group field and let's drag it in so now it should be separate and our UV transform should only affect the current group Let's save that up, match that, and let's double check. So now it's only scaling the texture we have selected, right? Which is what we want. And then before we continue, the last thing that I quickly want to make sure is that we've set this to a vertex UV, okay? So over here, I'm creating vertex UVs, and that's because inside of our node, I have set up my UV texture to generate a vertex class attribute. Now, if in your case this is set to auto or perhaps to points, then it might cause some issues. So make sure this is set to vertex mode. And with that, uh, if you've got this set up properly, then we should be able to continue. Okay, so at this point, I just want to make sure that our tool is working in Unreal as well. Now, as far as I know, 
the Unreal Material Path should be set up properly. However, just to make sure, let's grab this setup and let's wrap it inside of a um, subnet. And I'm just going to call this a temporary test asset, as in test um, simple texture asset. Something like that. Then um, let's create a digital asset out of this. I'm not going to get very complicated about this. Let's just make sure we save it in our job folder with our HDAs. So like that should do. Accept that. And now I just want to set up a little test setup here so I can control what materials we are actually loading. So in here, I'm going to grab from these two my parameters over here. Uh, let's grab the Unreal Material name for the first asset. Let's call this A. And then for the second one, let's grab it as well. And we'll call this one B. So with this, we should have the ability to set what material we are trying to load. And the drop down should come along. So if I go to the outside of this node, here are the drop downs. Um, like I mentioned, the parameters on these are separate. So if you're going to set the brick material, for example, here, you also need to make sure you set the Unreal material as well. Otherwise, this won't work, right? This also should be brick, like that. So with that, um, let's go ahead and save this out. And then let's hop over to Unreal and let's quickly test this out. So over here, I need to drop down my asset into the tool. And for now, I'm just going to drop it down in the main folder. Um, let's grab the simple Unreal Texture HDA utility and our little test asset, which is a wrapper for that one, right? Let's grab both of these and install them. And then I'm going to grab my test asset and drop it in. Now, by default, I have these textures set up. We can go over here and grab any of them. And that seems to work. So if you want, you can test out your different materials. Make sure that you set up the names correctly. Like here's the glass, for example. That should work. Looks like, yeah. So with this, you can quickly test out if your material system is working uh, and if all your presets are correct. Now I'm going to assume everything here is correct, so I'm just going to get rid of this again. And in fact, uh, I don't need these assets installed right now. We'll install them properly when we actually install the tool later. And then let's quickly go back to Houdini and wrap up this lecture. Okay. Now if you want to uninstall this asset, right, um, just deleting it from your folder over here, is not the best way to do it. If you delete this asset while it's still installed in your scene over here, um, it will actually cause Houdini to give you a warning. And we don't want that. I can demonstrate that quickly. Like if I grab this asset here and I delete it, and then I go back to Houdini, then Houdini will, the next time you try to do something, uh, tell you that something is missing. Uh, in this case, that's our simple texture asset, right? In that case, it only gives you a couple of options, either to load the asset again, retry to load it in from the folder that it came from, or to quit and save or discard your changes and quit anyway. This is a bit annoying, so quickly undo my deletion here, like that, and then I can say retry. And with that, it shouldn't be giving us that warning again. But now we need to go and actually uninstall this properly. So what I'm going to do is right click, go to show in asset manager. This will give you all the files that are currently installed in your uh, scene. And then you can go to the test asset that we just created, go to its HDA container and right click and say uninstall. And if you do that, it will give you a warning, uh, especially if it's still in your scene. I'm going to click OK. And if it's still in your scene, it will probably result in it being embedded. Now in that case, and in this case specifically, we can just grab it and delete it. And now 
I can also get rid of this embedded file as well. Now, the reason it made an embedded file just now is because if you try to delete an asset that's still installed in your scene, your scene will no longer work. So it will create an embedded file instead. And that file will be saved in your hip file, right? As an embedded file for your scene file. Okay, so with that, um, I think we are ready with this node. We have created our new utility asset and covered the basics of textures. In the next video, we are going to take this a step further and we are going to create our actual extrude node, which has some more functionality. And we'll need this one to texture the majority of this building. And of course, you can now use this asset to quickly apply textures to any of your projects because it is a utility node. You can use it anywhere. So I hope that will actually help you out in your own projects as well. But for now, I'm going to close off this lecture. Thank you for watching this video, and I hope to see you in the next one. Have a good one.